Welcome everybody. This is part three in our SOC 2 series about building and managing SOC 2 programs. And today what we're talking about is everything that you need to maintain your SOC 2 program. So if you have been through SOC 2 before and you're kind of in between audit cycles and you want to keep that program going, or if you're investigating SOC 2 and you want to know what you need to do, this video is just for you. Uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of RISC360. We help build security programs and we also do SOC 2 audits. Also with me today is Kendall Morris, who heads our customer success program. And we kind of brand Kendall as the guy who helps companies build programs and manage them between audit cycles. So he should have a lot of info for us today. So uh, Kendall, let's kick it off here and talk about uh, like what does it take to maintain a SOC 2 program? Organizations have put in a lot of time and effort especially you're one to build out a SOC 2 program. They've went through sprints. Everyone was enthusiastic to build out the initial SOC 2 program, but now they got to maintain that program to continue the uh, SOC 2. So in my mind, I think there's at least five things. I know you have thoughts on this too. And, and I'll kick it off with, I think, number one uh, mistake that I see companies make is that they need to get leadership buy-in. Um, you, you don't want to create the illusion that this is a one-time event and they never have to think about security or compliance again. SOC 2 is a year-over-year -year program that you have to maintain. And to maintain anything, you really need top-level leadership's buy-in to dedicate the time and resources to do that. And that often means the CTO, the CEO, department heads, anyone who's involved in a SOC 2 report. Back in part one, we list out all the people who are typically involved in SOC 2. So if you're wondering who those leaders are, check out video one in that. Um, the second thing is dedicated people to own the program. That's one place that I've seen SOC 2 go wrong is you get through the audit and now no one owns the program. No one's thinking about it until the next audit life cycle. And I know Kendall, you deal with that a lot. Kind of when we hand the customer off to you for to customer success to continue their program, who, who do you typically see owning SOC 2 programs in between audits? I usually will see some sort of compliance manager who has uh, some previous expertise with SOC 2 or at least some other framework, PCI, uh, ISO 27001, whatever it may be. And, you know, their role really becomes as like that team leader, right? Corralling the troops and kind of functioning as that go between between executive management and between the uh, the teams that are really executing on those control activities. Yeah, well, so I, I kind of see it two ways. Often there's a dedicated like GRC manager, someone with prior experience. And the other time it's, you know, like a project manager or something. And it kind of depends on the company's maturity. But if, if a company doesn't have that GRC experience person, that's the obvious candidate for it. What, what do you typically see companies do? Are they hiring in that position? Are they asking someone from IT to do it? Are there other good types of individuals who can own a program in between audits? I usually will see some sort of compliance manager who has uh, some previous expertise with SOC 2 or at least some other framework, PCI, uh, ISO 27001, whatever it may be. And, you know, their role really becomes as like that team leader, right? Corralling the troops and kind of functioning as that go between between executive management and between the uh, the teams that are really executing on those control activities. Yep. So for, for your organization, if you're a high growth tech SaaS company that you know, doesn't have a dedicated GRC or compliance manager, I think it's a good idea to consider that. Um, maybe you have a project manager who's kind of that ops person that does lots of different roles. Sometimes they're a good role or it might be somebody in product if they have the bandwidth to do that. But just consider someone needs to own that program and know that they own it so they can maintain all the things. And then the question always comes up, well, what does that person need to do? What does maintaining the program look like? And we'll talk through some of that stuff. But one of the key things that I think is important is the meeting rhythm. Uh, there needs to be a cadence of accountability to keep the program going. And I've seen uh, weekly meetings. There's typically a cadence. It's usually annual activities, like a strategy session, annual audit. There's typically quarterly uh, meetings, like a quarterly information risk council meeting. Then there's maybe monthly meetings up to management. And then there's that weekly compliance meeting where you're doing spot checks of controls. You're making sure that all the different things you have to do to maintain the SOC 2 program are done. And then you're reporting out to the rest of the team on what to do. So Kendall, can you talk about those two things and 
like the cadence of accountability, meeting rhythms, and the spot checking of controls. What are you recommending to clients to kind of manage that stuff? Yeah, I would definitely say at least monthly, you're getting in there looking at your controls, making sure that things are functioning appropriately, if not weekly. Uh, those meetings are key to keeping the team accountable. A lot of people that are responsible for those SOC 2 controls are not necessarily in the day-to-day -day with security and compliance. You might have the HR representatives, you may have developers, and for them it's out of sight, out of mind, right? Um, if they aren't living that day-to-day, -day, then they're going to be forgetting about it. Uh, so just making sure that you uh, create that culture of accountability and that you're following up uh, regularly on those control requirements. For the control spot check, um, one thing that we'll see is uh, you may have a tool, it may just be a spreadsheet, but somewhere you have a list of all of your control activities that you have to meet. And uh, I'll see customers just divide them up into 12 pieces, uh, one section per month. So over the course of a year, they've inspected every single control. They have a good degree of confidence going into that audit next year that uh, they've been keeping up with their commitments. They're ready to go. They're going to get that clean audit opinion. Yep, absolutely. And I won't plug it too much, but if you're like we use all of our clients get access to our, our GRC tool. It's called Phalanx. We give that to clients for free. You can uh, you can actually go get a free copy of that if you just visit our website. But there's ways to spot check controls, assign owners, do compliance events. Uh, but tool agnostic, if you're doing a spreadsheet, you're using a tool, whatever you're doing, I think there's you just need to have a process to track and manage all of that stuff's the bottom line. So, so maybe next we'll hop into some of the specifics. So if you're uh, at a point where you don't fully understand the SOC 2 requirements or you need a refresher, go back to uh, part one of our video series here where we talk about the framework itself. We also do a detailed framework breakdown in uh, part four and part five of this video series. So you can look at any of those and really get a deep dive of the framework itself. So what we've done here is we've broken up the framework and we're going to talk a little bit about things you need to be thinking about to maintain that SOC 2 program in between audits. So, so maybe, Kendall, can you kick us off here in the category of governance and leadership? What are some of the things that companies should be thinking about in terms of maintaining the program? Absolutely. Well, like you said earlier, uh, that upper level leadership buy-in is critical to the organization. One of the reasons why it's so critical is because that's where policies come from. That's management's intent for the operation of the security and compliance program. So one of the key things that you have to make sure gets done is that annual review of those policies, making sure that they still meet the uh, technical environment, the regulatory environment, that they match the company strategy. Uh, and then along with that, the annual risk assessment and quarterly risk council meetings uh, are two things I will often recommend uh, for any SOC 2 client. And really that comes down to once a year having a very intentional meeting with leadership, with stakeholders from across the business, from uh, executive leadership to technology to compliance um, and seeing you know, what risks are there to our business as we look ahead um, for the next year, for the next five years. Um, and then just iterating on that every quarter, uh, gut check in on are these risks being addressed appropriately? Has anything new come up? Uh, and then doing a annual internal audit, uh, quarterly or monthly spot check on controls, ensuring that that compliance environment is still operating effectively. Um, and then making sure that that environment, uh, once again, still matches the organization strategy. Yep. Yeah, I think one one mistake I see companies make is uh, the the compliance manager or whoever will communicate to leadership, oh, we got this, you don't really need to be involved, this is a compliance check the box activity. But then when you start looking into SOC 2, there really are top level leadership activities that need to happen, like the annual risk assessment, like reports up to leadership, leadership buy-in, policy approvals. Um, and that's essential to SOC 2. That's kind of what the whole framework's based around. So you, you just got to prepare leadership that they're going to need to be involved a little bit. Yep. And Christian, I'll, I'll say this as well. 
uh, this security and compliance program should help drive the business forward. If it didn't, then leadership wouldn't be investing in it. So ensuring that this program matches the goals of the business, be it uh, fast growth, be it expansion to new markets, whatever it might be, this program needs to reflect that. And getting leadership buy-in will be the, the fastest and easiest way to ensure that alignment. Let's move on and talk about uh, when you're maintaining your program, information technology and the security departments. And depending on your size of company, your SaaS startup, that might be one and the same. If you're a really large company, you might have a, a very different IT and security department, maybe even different elements of each of those. But generally, there's a few things that you need to think about when you're maintaining uh, your program. So on the IT front, there's going to be your policies, and then there's going to be asset inventory, laptop security, access control. So if you think about anything to do with deploying technology, managing access to that technology, and all the documentation surrounding that. So for example, uh, the user onboarding and offboarding piece of that, sometimes you just deploy a laptop, but there's no paper trail whatsoever. Or you may deploy a laptop and you don't do the, a standard security hardening to it. Again, what I've seen is a company will have a really big push to get ready for SOC 2. And in between the audit, they'll kind of get lax on some of that stuff and let those controls fall through. So uh, from an IT perspective, it's all about the discipline of those processes. Secure your laptops, maintain your asset inventory, keep access cleaned up, do periodic user access reviews to make sure no terminated users still have access, make sure access is correct, email security, all of that, just maintain that stuff and keep your eye on it. And then with those monthly spot checks, uh, give IT some feedback if you notice that anything's falling by the wayside and maybe they're slipping a little bit. And then moving into security, they also have to do their annual policy reviews, make sure those are accurate. They typically, they have to do an annual risk assessment. So a security risk assessment that'll probably be company-wide in nature, but security often leads that. They need to think about the security assessment activities they need to do. So that typically looks like uh, ongoing vulnerability scans, typically at least quarterly, but usually continuous, um, annual pen test, um, incident management pro uh, program. So if you're receiving customer complaints, if you have an actual security incident, and then the annual security training itself. So a lot of these are just kind of something you have to maintain all the time, make sure that they don't fall by the wayside. And some of these are actually reoccurring activities that you have to do over and over again. Those are big swaths. Can you know anything that you want to add in particular for these two categories? Yeah, I think for anything that is that continuous activities, you know, the laptop deployment or uh, user access removal, uh, it's so critical to have those recurring activities sort of as that detective element, right, to ensure that those are happening consistently, that access is being removed appropriately, uh, that all your laptops are being provisioned correctly. Yep. Yep. I think about it for our program. So I'm the CEO of Risk360, but I want visibility into how our security programs going. And one of the things that I really appreciate is that we do that annual internal audit. So someone in the on the team reviews all of our controls and then kind of reports up to management on a quarterly basis how everything's going. So I can make decisions. So I can say, okay, this piece of the program is really falling down. This piece of the program is going really well. Here's some, op here's some opportunities for improvement. So that layer of visibility helps me manage as an executive. And I think most of our clients who have a SOC 2 program are the same way. They don't want to be involved in the day-to-day -day tasks that happen, but they do need some way to manage the program, get visibility, and hold people accountable. So those spot checks, those monitoring controls that help you do that are something that whoever's managing the SOC 2 program can contribute to to help you make management decisions. So how do we get a product and engineering? Um, we, we separate product and engineering from IT. I know some sometimes that's the same company. Like if people, do, if you're a really small SaaS company, you may have limited resources where IT is the product team, but we're going to separate these by responsibility. So I, I separate product and engineering into product. So that's like SaaS application development, infrastructure, which is maintaining the, the servers and AWS cloud environment, whatever that might be and then customer support, so managing customer issues. So on the product side, you're gonna to need to maintain and document your SDLC uh, policy, 
you're going to have to abide by that policy. So if this is hard for scaling companies, because sometimes the tendency is to move so fast that you break your own process or you skip steps, but there needs to be process discipline. And then thinking about secure coding practices, making sure that, you know, whether it's automated uh, security built into the secure coding practices or QA or however you're doing that, doing all of that. So it's, it's less about a process that needs to happen weekly. And those are more about processes that need to have all the time, great process discipline built into the SDLC, accompanying by, by spot checks on pure databases to make sure they're actually doing that. A lot of that's the same on the infrastructure side. So I think about, for example, if you're doing um, uh, source or uh, engineering, like uh, infrastructure as code, well, maybe that's going to follow a lot of the same principles as SDLC. But if you're managing something like hardware or physical servers, you're going to have a change management process there. You're going to have secure hardening procedures for that those are pieces of infrastructure, or you're going to be applying cloud-based hardening standards, and then you're going to need an inventory of all of those assets. Again, these aren't reoccurring tasks. These are things, just process discipline that requires a spot check. And then the last piece of it is customer support. So SOC 2 does cover uh, how you communicate with customers. There's a whole section on communication, meaning that if they tell you there's a security incident, how do you communicate to them? If they report something to you, how do they do that? Do you have a way for them to report something? If you do have a security incident, do you know who to communicate to? Are there elements in your contract that require that you tell the customer that you had that incident? How do you recover from an incident? So that's around the customer support slash incident response. Again, all about process discipline. Highly recommend spot checks to maintain all of that to make sure it's going well. Uh, Ken, anything you want to add in the product and engineering front? I think a lot of this does come down to a security first mindset for the product and engineering teams and you know, support teams, success teams, anything like that. Um, I think a good gut check is if a customer reports something that may potentially be a security vulnerability, you know, how is that process within your organization? Does that get worked into a sprint, um, maybe the current sprint, maybe the next sprint, uh, in order to fix that as soon as possible? Uh, if you get a penetration test done, how do your engineers respond to that? You know, is it something, do they see it as something that is critical? It's something that needs to be fixed soon, uh, or is it maybe just more of a, a check the box? Um, oh, that annoying pen test just came back around, and, and really trying to instill that security mindset. Yeah, absolutely. So, so to tie this up in a neat bow. I, I think it comes down ultimately to a few things: leadership buy-in, someone to own the program and manage it as part of their job. A set of reoccurring activities like a meeting cadences, control spot checks, all understanding all of your controls that need to operate on a recurring basis and a continuous basis, and then considering maybe a platform or some system to manage all of that. If you could do those things, you could typically do a really good job maintaining a SOC 2 program in between audits. Now, if you are thinking about SOC 2, you want to either upgrade your program or you're just getting started, uh, we, we just rolled out a platform. It's called Phalanx GRC, and you can get started for free. And what you can do in that platform is you can do a self-assessment over the SOC 2 framework. That self-assessment will return to you a report card with all of your gaps and detailed recommendations on what you need to do to fix those gaps. And then it will put you into a project management uh, module where you can actually start managing those projects to, uh, to final resolu resolution to become SOC 2 compliant. Then the platform lets you manage your whole program. We are value for value. We try to give the marketplace stuff back and hopefully in return, maybe you want to do business with Risk360 one day, but we would love it if you would check out that platform. Kindle's the customer success manager around that platform. And it's really aimed just to help you know, make everybody more secure and get through SOC 2. So please do check out that platform and give us some feedback on it. So uh, Kindle, thanks so much for your help today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, Christian. If you like content just like this, run over to risk360.com, check out our resource center where we have blog posts, white papers, videos, all for free that can teach you about cybersecurity. If you want to know more about cybersecurity certifications like ISO 27001, SOC 2, PCI, High Trust, and others, we have a ton of content on that. So whatever you're looking for, we have a lot of resources. Head on over to risk360.com, shoot us a note, and we look forward to keeping the conversation going. Mm -hmm.